Excellent. So thank you very much for your attention. I'll try to take no more than 10 minutes just to briefly go through the current ideas to the, for the design implementation of the eScience Center. Uh, so the first thing is, um, okay, okay. So the main concept, one of the main concepts of Pizia are the nodes. And then we can see the nodes as composed of several entities, which are users, uh, computational resources, uh, models, and data sets. And our goal in Pizia is to create a, to interoperate all these uh, resources in order to give something that is more than the um, sum of all the uh, various functionalities of the of the node. So the, to to add um, to create an added value in the integration of all these nodes. In order to do that, we actually first they try to um, define uh, some uh, basic roles uh, that the users can have in Pizia. Now, this, not, uh, this doesn't mean that they will not be extended in the future and even by the today's discussion, but these are the main uh, roles we have, uh, uh, we have defined up to now. So we have the first the scientific user, which is uh, a user that uses the functionalities offered by Pizia, but does not publish any new resource. So it consumes information, but doesn't publish information. And then there are owners of data sets and models that can register either data sets and, uh, or application models into uh, the eScience Center. And um, these three users will be able to do main, mainly four, uh, four uh, actions. They will be able to register data sets, they will be able to register model applications in order for the, for the scientific users to use them. They will be able uh, to select model applications and data set or combinations of the two to execute a model application on a data set to create an output data set. And they will be able to execute a model application on the data set. So first we select a combination of an application and a model on a data set and then we can execute this application model on data set. Where we execute it depends on the application and model itself. It can be executed on a node because it cannot be interrupted. Uh, this application is local to a node, or it can also be executed on a cloud resource if it is possible uh, to uh, describe it as a, um, as a reference architecture. I will explain this concept in the next slide. So, the first possibility is um, that we are, uh, there are models that are pre-deployed on the nodes, so, and they can directly be executed from the ESAN center. So there is no need to describe them as cloud resources, they will be executed on the nodes directly. But they also can be, uh, if possible, and then we already uh, tried uh, with, um, with NOAA, to do it with one of their codes. It is also possible to describe them as, um, as um, sorry, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a bit tired today. Uh, uh, it's possible to describe it as a, 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 a reference architecture so that the models can be deployed on the, um, on the heterogeneous cloud infrastructure and not only be executed on the node, but also on the, on the cloud, allowing for more computational power and interoperability. And then the eScience Center provides kind of like a, a centralized access to both the models that are executed on the nodes and those that are executed on the cloud. In order to do that, we propose an architecture of the eScience Center GUI on the eScience Center that is composed of various uh, components. So there will be a graphical user interface that will be intuitive and uh, a centralized access to all operations, both registration, execution, access to data sets, and so forth. There will be a component called CREL, which will allow to, uh, to structure um, 
learning material and research material that is uh, specific to the models and data sets. So it will be kind of like a, a system to structure the information uh, on, on the data set and models. Of course, there will be user management that we have to uh, discuss. Uh, then there will be a system that will allow to uh, create the reference architecture behind the scenes, uh, uh, taking away all the possible, um, taking, uh, taking the simple information from the users and trying to create this reference architecture without overloading the users of unnecessary information. And then there is a system that launches the reference architectures. So if the, the system can launch a reference architecture or can directly use the services uh, that are pre-deployed on the, on the model, on the nodes. And then of course, there will be repositories that will use metadata that to uh, store and, um, and register the, uh, the services and the, all, the, all the required uh, model services and data sets. And of course, every, all of this will run on cloud resources, which is the part that EGI will uh, kindly uh, support and offer. Now, we have started investigating possible uh, technologies for this. Uh, we have not uh, started an investigation of the GUI yet, but we have good candidate technologies for most of the components. So uh, smartest for the knowledge repository and learning, uh, a, a component called EMG GAM for the user management, a, a system called Mikado Launcher to launch the reference architecture and a system called EMG Repo to as a skeleton for the repository and, um, and um, metadata uh, registry. And uh, of course, on the reference architecture side, we already have a system called Mikado that allows to uh, launch and uh, deploy and launch the applications. And we have already tested it with, uh, with NOAA with one application, which is the ACE model. And we also uh, uh, experimented with Jupyter Hub. And that's that's all from the moment uh, from for 